Around 550 million years ago, life left the hostile and competitive oceans when plants evolved. Plants forever altered life on land by creating structures, providing homes, food, and oxygen to breathe, allowing animals to colonize the land. We need to look at biodiversity as, a, as world resources, not as a local resources. The forest is important for the water, it's important for the people, and uh, what's inside the forest and the biodiversity can be important also for uh, the plant species that you find inside this forest. And those plant species are important for medicine. Medicine are good for the humans. And, uh, and then you go beyond that where the animals are are important to preserve if you want to maintain the ecosystem and maintain the ecosystem services that lives around those areas. We know from studying the archaeological sites of earlier civilizations that when they moved on to an environmental path where they were destroying their natural support systems, their forests, their soils, that it was only a matter of time until they declined and eventually collapsed. No civilization has ever survived the ongoing destruction of its natural support systems, nor will ours. Tropical forests are home to more than half of the world's species and produce a third of our oxygen. 85% of the species in Madagascar are found nowhere else on Earth. The first primates evolved around 90 million years ago, when Madagascar started drifting away from the mainland, creating a lifeboat for lemurs. Now, Madagascar is the only place lemurs live. Many of them mate for life. Shafakas spend their entire lives in the trees and so have no feet, just four hands to better grip branches. We're primates, like lemurs, that evolved only recently, 200,000 years ago. But it wasn't until we discovered fire and the power of burning fossil fuels that our population and consumption explode. Madagascar has an enormous amount of resources, but it's also one of the poorest countries in the world. 22 million people live here, and Madagascar has already lost 90% of its forest. We know that over the past 40 years, we lost about 80% of our forest surface. We have slash and burns also that is going on because we have a growing populations and that growing population is in demand of land. And so the more land they can cultivate, the more they will burn forest. As we continue to kind of poke holes in the web of life and weaken the web of life, and we weaken kind of our ability to survive as a species. Scientists estimate as many as 100 to 1,000 species are wiped off the face of the Earth each day. And scientists expect two-thirds of the world's species could be gone by the end of the century. So although we take it for granted, we rely on the species around us for all our fundamental needs, for your clean water, for our food, for the clean air that we breathe, for erosion control along the coast. You know, when there's a big storm along the coast, those coastal wetlands protect us from those storms. And we get pollination of our crops from all the species around us. So as we push other species over the edge, we also jeopardize our own future, and that's not sustainable. We need to protect our rainforests around the world because they have so much life, and they also hold a lot of carbon. So they are sort of part of the lungs of our globe.
The Amazon, you know, at the very local level, is sustaining 200 indigenous groups and another 20 million uh, Amazonians. The trees of the Amazon, they pump so much water vapor into the atmosphere that they actually are a source of vapor for the rainfall systems further south in the breadbasket of, of South America. Everyone in the world is somehow tied to the well-being of that forest. By the year 2030, we estimate that about 55% of the forests of the Amazon will have either been cleared or degraded through logging or degraded through fire or drought. Places like the Amazon, tropical forests of the world, and that includes what we see in Borneo and in Central Africa, their future is very much dependent upon the ability of humans to get a handle on climate change, to really rapidly lower emissions and reverse them. What it also means is that in order to do that, we have to take care of rainforests. When you clear the forest, you inhibit rainfall, and that provokes more fire and more smoke. Uh, so these, these are vicious cycles that have the potential to really push the, the Amazon back in a fast way. A 1,500-year-old baobab tree from an ancient forest. When this was a sapling, there were 300 million people on Earth. In the life of one tree, we've consumed most of our life support system. Most of the fish, most of the forest, most of the food. And now there are seven billion of us. Seeing some of Madagascar's last forests being burned, it's clear to me now, we don't just have a carbon problem, we have a human problem. I'm Felix, I'm 13, and we came here to plant trees with the ministers and the heads of states to force them to do something. When we started four years ago, we thought we had to save the polar bear. Um, we thought we had to save the environment. But soon after, we found out that it's about our future, that we have to save our own future. The project started four years ago in my class in Bavaria. I was supposed to give a presentation about the climate crisis and I found out about Vangari Matai, um, who planted 30 million trees in 30 years in Africa. The organization is called Plant for the Planet. It exists since four years. We want to plant one million trees in each country of the world. By now, there are about 100,000 children in 91 countries involved. We can change something if we work together worldwide. But just talking without any action won't save our future. By talking, the glaciers won't stop melting and the rainforests won't stop disappearing.